I absolutely refuse to live together. I'm sure I'll be bullied by my mother-in-law. Don't you dare oppose me, you are stupid because you only graduated from middle school. I will divorce you. My husband believed that if you marry, it's only natural that you do the housework for his parents. However, he takes the stance that the housework he expects is normal, even though it goes beyond the limits of what is reasonable. The conversation is completely out of sync, and he tries to make me understand his opinion not with words, but by throwing things at me. I'm getting off this sinking ship. If you say you want to divorce, I'll be happy to oblige. My name is Jessica. The other day, my kid said something like, I love rain, and played in the yard, getting soaking wet without my knowledge. As a result, she caught a cold. Kid's behavior can be unpredictable. I'm a 40-year-old parent who's struggling with raising a kid. Kids are cute, but people who look like adults but act like kids are even more unpredictable. I realized this when I was in my 20s. I only graduated from middle school because my mother forgot to complete the high school enrollment procedures and eventually declined the admission without consulting me. The procedures are too troublesome, so it's okay to give up. My father was divorced, and I was his stepchild. My stepmother also divorced before and then remarried my father without any children. At first, she was fond of me. However, after my younger sister was born, both my father and mother lost interest in me and treated me carelessly. Regarding high school enrollment, my mother said, You can do it again next year. But nowadays, hardly anyone enters high school one year after graduating from middle school. I didn't want to stand out in class, so I chose to work and leave home with only a middle school education. Thus, I did not enter high school and obtained qualifications while working part-time and started working as a medical clerk. Then, I began to receive passionate approaches from Michael, a physician who was 10 years older than me. For me in my 20s, 10 years older was honestly an old man. At first, I wasn't interested. However, when I saw him stutter his confession to me and unable to say them well, and despite having a scary face, he tried to make child patients smile by performing a poor ventriloquist act. As I watched him, I began to find him cute in a way and I was drawn to that gap. I realized that I was thinking more and more about him. In this way, we gradually became closer and finally got married. My husband was an only child, and his parents were originally a hospital doctor and a nurse. They were not super elite, but they were a decent family. At least, I, who was born to parents who graduated from high school, but only graduated from middle school couldn't compete with them. However, my parents-in-law also didn't care about my academic background, and they were very nice people. I thought from the bottom of my heart that I had married into such a good family. After marriage, even though I myself have had a workplace romance, I suddenly thought that it might be difficult for colleagues to work with a married couple in the workplace and resign to become a housewife. Maybe that wasn't a good idea. Several months after our marriage, I was told that my father-in-law had retired, and we were planning to celebrate. Just then, my mother-in-law suddenly contacted me. Come to our house right now. She just said wanted me to come because it was very hard, and she didn't tell me any specific reasons. Without knowing the reason, I went to my parents-in-law's house, which was about 20 minutes away from my house, and my mother-in-law was waiting for me at the entrance. You are late. Now, let's start your bride training today. Huh? While I was still confused, my mother-in-law handed me a mop and a floor cleaning spray. First. Let's clean the hallway. Our house has had a wide hallway since my grandmother's time. Please mop up everything. Uh, no, wait, what? My mother-in-law seemed to sense that I was about to object. Remember, if you're going to be my daughter-in-law, you need to learn these things. She said this with a smile, but her eyes were not smiling at all. If this were a story, this would be the part where I say, I won't do such a thing. But I couldn't resort to such a clumsy move. I didn't even know the true intentions of my mother-in-law, who I thought was a good person, had changed. After reluctantly finishing cleaning the hallway, my mother-in-law said. 
Learn taste of our home cooking. And make me cook a meal and even prepare the bath. After returning home without understanding the circumstance, I realized. Was I just made to do housework instead of going through bride training? But, well. I wasn't being verbally abused, and I was able to eat lunch with them. Maybe they really have been doing that kind of bride training in that family all along. After all, they seem to be an elite family for generations. When I consulted my husband. It doesn't hurt to listen to my parents. Is that so? While thinking about it, I decided to watch the situation. If I weren't a housewife, I might not be called by my parents-in-law. However, I couldn't look for a job now. My husband and I lived together in an apartment where he used to live alone before we got married. However, we have recently purchased a newly built house and are about to move in. If possible, I would like to find a job near my home after moving. There are also arrangements for moving companies and cleaning up the room after moving, so it was more convenient for me not to work. However, after that, I was called to my parents-in-law's house almost every day and was made to do normal housework under the name of a bride training, as well as weeding in the scorching sun and visiting ancestors' graves. In addition, my mother-in-law said things like me washing my father-in-law's back in the bath. It's really strange to think about it. I realized that my mother-in-law, who had increased her housework such as making lunch because her husband, who had retired, was trying to push everything on me. It may be used as a kind of stress relief. I can't follow, take a bath, with my father-in-law. When I fiercely protested for the first time. You don't have enough awareness as a daughter-in-law. Reflect on your actions. I was locked in the bathroom. When I was finally released, my mother-in-law said. I resisted desperately, but was pushed into the bathroom with my father-in-law, who was fully prepared. There is nothing but fear. I really hate it. Please stop. I begged many times, but my mother-in-law was angry. If you have reflected, wash his back. I've been doing the same thing all along to my husband and father-in-law. It's women's job to contribute to men. Remember if you're my daughter-in-law. My father-in-law did not have a face of someone teaching me something, but he was clearly grinning and grabbed my wrist with a slightly moist hand while he whispered in my ear. I'll count on you. Goosebumps rose in an instant, but my mother-in-law was waiting in front of the bathroom door and there was no sign that she would open the outside key no matter what. My father-in-law seems to be expecting backwashing now, and his eyes are shining. If I stay here alone with him for a long time like this, I might be in danger. I imagined it and shuddered, so I decided to finish the backwashing quickly and escape from there. However, knowing my thoughts, my father-in-law repeated disgusting instructions. A little slower, yes, more down. Even after being released, my mother-in-law started saying things like, I think you understand but I won't tolerate it if you use a suggestive tone to him. I wouldn't do such a thing. After that, I was made to maintain the garden again in the scorching sun. When I was about to get heat stroke and was taking a break, my mother-in-law forced me to stand up by saying, What a weak daughter-in-law from a doctor's family. Don't rest because it's embarrassing. It was fortunate that I didn't collapse. I don't want to have anything to do with my parents-in-law anymore. So I went home and told my husband everything that had happened so far and today's events. However, my husband didn't side with me. My mother did the same thing in the past. It's a natural path for a daughter-in-law, so work hard without complaining. He was positive. You may not know some common sense because you are a middle school graduate from a remarried family. You should learn from my parents. Certainly, I don't know about ordinary families and what the relationships between daughter-in-law and mother-in-law is like in the world, as I have never experienced a normal family life and because my grandparents and parents cut off ties. I only know what a daughter-in-law and mother-in-law relationship is like from daytime soap operas and everybody loves Raymond, but I thought that my parents-in-law's behavior was similar to that. It seems strange to me like my husband and my parents-in-law. Am I the one who is strange? 
As a result of worrying about it, I confided in a married woman who was my senior at my previous workplace and asked for advice on the current situation. As expected, the answer from my senior was, that family is strange. That's right. Actually, I stopped going to my parents-in-law's house since the day of the eye washing, but they keep calling me persistently at home. For now, I'm avoiding them by saying that I'm not feeling well or that I happen to be shopping, but they probably know that I'm lying. I want to consult with my husband again or find a way to keep a moderate distance from my parents-in-law without causing any trouble. According to my senior, Parents of that type will come closer when you try to keep your distance, so it's difficult. They think of their daughter-in-law as their tool. That's what she said. I wondered if such a thing could happen even if I wasn't their real daughter. My senior's prediction was correct. When I returned home after parting with my senior, my mother-in-law and father-in-law were standing there. You didn't respond to our invitation, but where did you go? We called you. My mother-in-law glared at me with sharp eyes. I was meeting with someone from my previous workplace. At that moment, my father-in-law coughed loudly and then shouted. I'm amazed. You are our daughter-in-law, you should serve us 24 hours a day, why are you wandering around playing? He shouted in the middle of a residential street, so people in the neighborhood opened their curtains and looked at us. You eat with my son's money without doing any housework, and you're wandering around playing, I can't believe it. My mother-in-law was also angry. No, I finished the housework before I went out. That's not true. The housework in our house is not finished. Huh? Whose family name do you think you have? It's our family name. Then the daughter-in-law should do the housework in that house, right? Then aren't you in the same position? I'm fine. My mother-in-law snorted and my father-in-law said. You are not obedient, you just keep arguing. I don't understand why I'm being scolded, I shouldn't be the one at fault. We'll leave for today, so cool your head. But the two of them behaved as if they were right and left. That night, it seems that my husband received a complaint from my parents-in-law, and I was scolded by my husband. What do you mean by not responding to my parents' call? I told you before, it's strange for a daughter-in-law to wash her father-in-law's back. I'm not my father-in-law's wife. That's because you don't know common sense. What my parents say is normal. My husband doesn't know common sense too, because he only knows about his own family, my husband thinks, my family is normal. As a result, no matter how much I talk about the abnormality of my parents-in-law, I'm told that it's just an excuse that I don't know common sense. I felt more pain than I thought I would in a situation where we couldn't talk to each other. Even if it's normal for you, I don't like it. Can't you respect that? You only think about yourself. Don't be selfish. There's no such thing as being selfish. I'm not saying that I don't want to do housework in our house. If you're married, my parents' house is your house too. You have to do the housework. You're saying the same thing as your mother. At that moment, I was amazed that they could not communicate. That's a problem. We'll live with our parents from now on. What? I was stunned by the words I heard. I don't remember hearing that story. Why are you surprised? We bought a house, so it's natural for our parents to live with us, right? My husband asked me with a little pressure as if he wanted to say. Is there a problem? At times like this, I hate it when my older husband gives off an air of, I'm superior. Well, I didn't mean that. But I wasn't consulted, was I? Do we need to consult? My parents will just live in the house I bought under my name. You don't need to be consulted. It's necessary. I don't want to live with them because I'll definitely be bullied. 
I can't believe that you call my parents people who bully their daughter-in-law. Don't defy my orders, you stupid middle school graduate. I'll divorce you. My husband, who had lost his temper, threw a cup at me. Fortunately, it didn't hit me, and only the cup fell to the floor and shattered with a loud noise. Perhaps because he was frustrated that it didn't hit me, my husband started throwing things around indiscriminately. I did my best to curl up to avoid getting hit. Stop it. I said stop. Shut up. You're arguing with me. You're arguing with me. I'll make sure to drill my greatness into you. He's out of control. The remote control my husband threw hit the potted plant on the shelf, and the pot fell and broke. At that moment, I suddenly became calm. My parents-in-law are outdated and ridiculous, and my husband is a big child with a temper tantrum. Shouldn't I get off this sinking ship? Actually, I had some kind of coercion that said, if you get married, you have to work hard to protect your family. You shouldn't divorce like my real mother and father. I had thought that, divorce is bad, because I longed for a family. But that's not true. You said you want a divorce, didn't you? When I glared at my husband, he seemed to flinch for a moment. Uh, yeah. Great. Please let me divorce you. I realized that I was no good for marrying into such an outdated family. I have come to my senses. My husband seemed to regret his words and tried to persuade me to reconsider the divorce. Later, I was surrounded by my parents-in-law and told to reconsider, but I stubbornly refused to accept it, and we got divorced. Ten years had passed since then. I had found a new job and was living a peaceful life. One day, my ex-husband and my ex-parents-in-law were waiting for me in front of my workplace. As soon as they saw me, they rushed over to me with a Jessica and a reunion-like excitement. I ignored them, but my ex-husband grabbed my hand. Please listen to me. I asked him what was going on. Huh? Please become our housekeeper. What? I was taken aback by his unexpected request, as I thought he was going to ask me to reconcile with him. When I asked him why he wanted me to become their housekeeper, he told me that after our divorce, the three of them started living together in a newly built house, and my ex-mother-in-law started taking care of my ex-father-in-law and my ex-husband. My ex-father-in-law, who was originally bossy, acted like a boss towards his wife at home, perhaps because he couldn't act bossy outside after quitting his job. He gave her petty instructions under the guise of giving cooking advice, and even complained about the child-rearing that had long since ended. He even went so far as to blame her for our divorce. Michael and Jessica got divorced because of you. Well, I guess he's not entirely wrong, but if I had to correct him, I would say. It's because you guys were like that we got divorced. After she got married, my ex-mother-in-law quit her job as a nurse and became a housewife, devoting herself to taking care of the house. However, when her husband was at work, she would meet her friends during the day to relieve her stress. That was because she couldn't do it every day because of her husband and she must have been under a lot of stress. One day, she suddenly said, I won't do anything anymore. And abandoned everything from housework and shut herself in her room. So my ex-father-in-law, who was in trouble, demanded his son help with the housework. A son should be filial to his parents. Although my ex-husband initially agreed to his elderly father's request, he couldn't balance work and housework and made mistakes at work. He didn't get fired, but his colleagues disliked him, talked behind his back, and he became mentally ill and quit his job. If he continued like this, he would repeat the same thing even if he got a new job. So he decided to target me and asked former colleagues and mutual acquaintances to find out where I was. The reason why he found me is terrible, and I think it's not good that he can only rely on others. I realized that there was no healing in the house without you. Please come back to us as a housekeeper, no, if you want, I'll be happy to welcome you back as my wife. Please come back home. I almost burst out laughing at my ex-husband's operatic gestures. 
In his head, he must be the prince and I must be a servant of a different class. I think my lifespan will be shortened by stress if you guys are around, so I'll pass. Are you still angry about that time? Women who hold grudges are not good. Hey, are you here to ask for something? Or are you here to look down on me? No, that's not it. You did a great job anyway. I'm just sorry that I realized it too late. That's right, you didn't do anything. Even now, I regret marrying you because you didn't do anything. That's, can't we let bygones be bygones like flowing water? Just looking at your face makes my heart feel like it's about to clog up the drain. It won't flow anymore. You're a rude person, and no, please. This is how it is, out of consideration for my ex-wife. I'll improve your treatment this time, and if you don't like being a housekeeper, I'll marry you. A leopard never changes its spots, my ex-husband with an uncommunicative thought process will remain the same until the coffin. I don't want to be a housekeeper, and I hate marriage even more. Why would I think that presenting me with this hellish choice is beneficial to me? I want to see the contents of his overly positive brain. You, who have grown old and have a big belly, lost the status as a doctor, and have two monster parents, are a department store of disadvantages. I absolutely refuse. You know, they're your parents, so take care of them yourself. I hate that kind of thing too. Huh. You're too uncommunicative. A husband who can't communicate because of different values and can't discuss things won't work no matter what. If I can't communicate with my husband anyway, it's better to marry a stuffed animal. But you don't listen to my request either. I'm asking you so much. It's wrong that you put your hands in your pockets while asking people for things and saying that it was because of suffering mentally was a lie because you didn't want to take care of your parents. You lived alone, so you should be able to do some housework. You couldn't balance work and housework because you were probably playing games at night. My ex-husband was silent at my words. It's like a bullseye. Even my ex-parents-in-law. Huh? Is that so? They swarmed around my ex-husband. You were playing games until late at night in the bedroom before, weren't you? If someone does all the housework for you, there's no problem, but getting up early in the morning, making breakfast, doing your job, and playing games late at night, you won't have the energy for that. No, that's... My ex-mother-in-law shouted at my ex-husband, who was at a loss for words. Didn't you say you wouldn't play games after you got married? You're an adult and you're still playing games. It's impossible to prioritize games over taking care of your parents. Even though it's not so bad if it's sick parents or something, it seems a little strange for a healthy ex-mother-in-law to say that I'll leave it alone. By revealing his secret, my ex-husband was completely disarmed and became shy. Well, Jessica's right, but... I also have something I want to do, you know, please forgive me. My ex-husband reached out his hand and asked for a handshake, but I shook it off. I'm not going to be your housekeeper in exchange for your game time, are you stupid? No, that's why I said I'm okay with remarrying. Then I'll be yours too, so there's no problem, right? That's the last thing I need. Why not? The moment my ex-husband raised his voice, a uniformed man appeared behind him. Excuse me. Apparently, he was a police officer, and there had been reports of him persistently harassing women around here and causing trouble. I don't know who it was, but thank you to all the neighbors. When I looked around, the staff at the hospital I work at were looking at me. I see, my colleagues reported it anonymously. Colleagues are the ones to hold on to. Thus, my ex-husband was persuaded by the police, and I got a restraining order, and our problem was closed. Afterwards, I received a love letter from my ex-husband at work, perhaps thinking that he didn't even have to approach me. 
The situation hasn't changed, and it seems that it was difficult for three unemployed people living on a pension to make ends meet, so only my ex-husband was kicked out of the house this time, the content was that he wanted to live together because he had no place to live. Of course, I didn't reply to that, and a few months later, I got remarried. My partner was a man I had been dating for five years, introduced to me by a colleague that he knew that I was being stalked by my ex-husband, and after we got remarried, he went with me to the address written on the love letter. It was to scare my ex-husband a little. Actually, my ex-pro wrestler husband is scary just standing there. On the other hand, my ex-husband is a man with glasses and flabby fat. My current husband smiled at my ex-husband. I thought I'd let you know that she and I got remarried. He greeted him in an unusual way, but it was very effective, and my ex-husband, who was trembling, never got involved with us again. After that, I had a daughter with my current husband and I'm still busy raising her. My current husband is also helpful with child rearing and even took the lead in my daughter's park debut. Well, it goes without saying that the moms were scared. Thanks to that, even the troublesome mom friends respect me, and it's easier to spend time with them. Even though he's a first-time husband, he doesn't care at all about my marriage history, and he accepts that I'm a middle school graduated. I have a lot of friends like that. I remarried a good husband. Although my life has been full of ups and downs, I'm now living a happy life that's not enough even if I have 100 gold stars. How was this story? Please subscribe to the channel as well. Well then, let's meet in the next video.